so we are going live hello everyone good evening welcome to today's episode of psych talks on meditation we are on the second episode today and we are going to focus on one minute meditation uh, i am nitin shah i am the ceo of icharge and director of icharge support foundation this entire initiative about psych talks for uh, meditation on meditation is a result of a collaboration between icharge support foundation and the spark wing of uh, brahma kumaris mount abu uh, the objective behind this particular uh, series has been to talk about different types of meditations the different researches which have been created on that and to also help all of you understand how these meditations can become a part of your day to day life how they can benefit from you and then obviously end you with uh, specific uh, actionables that you can apply in your life and benefit from application of these meditations in your life uh we have with us today dr ajay kumar nair who is a post doctoral research associate at the center for healthy minds uh he is interested in multidisciplinary approaches to understand consciousness and well being in health and disease he is currently working with one of the best researchers richard davidson his neuroscience research work over the past 10 years has involved meditation participants from brahma kumaris raji yoga vipassana and heartfulness traditions his current research is on the adverse effects of chronic inflammatory diseases such as asthma on brain health prior to his research career he worked for 17 years in the information technology domain he also had an active meditation practice for 20 years with brahma kumaris which led to his interest in carrying out research on consciousness and well-being so welcome uh, dr ajay kumar i am glad to have you with us and i really hope that today we would be able to throw some light on one minute meditation and its research and then its application thank you ajay yeah. happy to be here thank you and please let us know if there are a couple of things that you would like to begin with before we get into the entire session no thanks no, for thanks organizing for this i think it's a very valuable initiative and i look forward to our discussion perfect thank you so dr ajay kumar if i'm not wrong today we are discussing about one minute meditation right mhm um would you be able to give us a brief introduction to what is this one minute meditation and what was the objective behind this study sure um so actually uh, the notion of one minute meditation is a little odd usually when people talk about meditation it's about uh you know uh, people sitting in quiet for an hour or two and you know trying to introspect and so on um so <clears throat> in the brahma kumaris there is this interesting approach called um uh, you know traffic control and so what that basically means is uh, during the day we have a lot of traffic of thoughts in our head and um so is it possible to take a break from that like if you reach a traffic junction and you see a red light you stop right you don't have a choice so similarly they have this practice called traffic control and there's another one called uh, the spiritual drill so uh, which is like uh, in school you would have done this physical education training and you do 1 2 3 and and you change your posture so the goal there is to change your um, you know mental state at will and so i was very curious um, to understand how this works is it uh, you know do you feel good in one minute or do you actually make a physiological change do you have a you know um, any change that is practically happening in the brain so that's something i wanted to study and it's a very unique kind of a thing um so that's that's what led to this uh, research that we did at nimhans uh, bangalore that's the national institute of mental health and neurosciences so um, so the idea was to study how this ju- just a minute meditation works um, can you do meditation in a minute can you does it you know can any person do it uh, who doesn't have any training uh, or do you benefit if you have advanced training so that's the kind of context in which this research was done it was done with eeg and uh, electroencephalography and you know trying to understand what's happening so i can talk more about that as we go forward all right perfect 
and you know when we are talking about one minute meditation so obviously the question is it really possible to meditate only for a minute yeah uh i think it's definitely possible and our research sort of demonstrates that the question there is um how practical is it to effectively make a state change so the question here is um you know some people might take a long time but those who are experts should be able to get into and get out of a change a state at will right so the goal is for a master for a person who is new it might take effort but those who are really a master in a particular technique they should be able to just snap into a state snap out of a state at will on demand anytime you know in any context and uh, actually in in our study we tested that we tested if it's possible you know uh, in day to day life uh, if if you have a stress you have some you make some mistakes so after that is it possible to meditate and would you get the same benefits right so early morning if you sit and there's no problems everything is chill at that time you meditate sure you can do a, a good job but can you do it also if you are challenged and and that's what we tested and and actually it is possible and uh, but it it needs practice it needs training that's that's what the results uh, were and we can go into that as as we go forward okay so interestingly um i i don't know if you are aware of this at icharge we are into training therapists and coaches in terms of developing advanced therapeutic skills right and this is one of the big challenges that both coaches and therapists face that our clients are not able to change their state quickly mm -hmm. uh when they come for a particular session they are in a particular emotional state and it's it's very difficult for them to transition from that one state to another right yeah. and uh, it's it's amazing that you could have something like one minute meditation where people could make that transition so quickly especially after they've practiced and obviously they have got some experience right. in that right. uh interestingly a lot of processes that we cover also kind of help people do create those state changes and so on so for all of you who are watching if you feel that it's difficult for you to do meditation because it will take years of practice the truth is one it's not necessarily true for everyone different people take different amount of time and second even if it takes you longer it's actually worth that time because the ability for you to transition from state 1 to state 2 can be very powerful in your day to day life right all right so going forward from where we were a lot of times when people are doing meditation there are a lot of these thoughts that come in their mind right what would you suggest how would this play out in one minute meditation sure um the i think the main thing to be um you know to focusing on is anyone can pay attention to uh, a specific thing uh, if they're interested in it right um if if people are watching a tv show or a movie or a sport that they're interested in uh, they're able to focus without any problem right so it's a matter of focus and value and one minute is certainly something that anyone can do so if if someone says that you know well i don't have half an hour my concentration is not good i cannot you know spend 30 minutes in one state that's fine i mean but can you do it for one minute i think anyone would be able to say that i can pay attention for one minute if i try if i don't try if i just sit casually and hope uh, that's not going to work but if if someone is um interested in mastering themselves and getting an experience um then if they put a serious um uh, you know attempt at it they should be able to manage this without an issue uh, and and managing waste thoughts or any other thing you can just have to say in your head that well, all that can wait for one minute for sure there's no urgency for that and let me let me for this minute just focus on the task at hand which is getting my state to be in this particular form which is advised whichever uh, meditation that is being done right so Perfect. it's certainly doable brilliant so uh um, also <clears throat> if any of you are having these challenges and facing these issues about thoughts and you're not even able to focus for a minute uh one is what a uh, doctor said is completely right that if you're really able to find something that you're interested in it should not be as difficult for you to focus for a minute which is one second it's obviously about being able to train your mind uh third 
what doctor said right now makes a lot of sense where you are able to tell people or you are able to tell yourself that you know if there is any other thought that i have it can wait for now and that conversation with self where you are able to inform yourself that it's okay for me to wait that doesn't mean that i'm i don't want to have these thoughts so that i am trying to avoid these thoughts i am simply asking myself for time so that i can come back to whatever th- thoughts i have after a minute and that self conversation can be extremely extremely important when it comes to uh, being able to manage your states and being able to handle your thoughts and emotions okay right? um lastly there is this one small trick that we use to be able to manage our thoughts right and the trick is to ask yourself what next so if you are sitting for a moment and you have a thought in your mind and if you feel that the thought is really persistent it's not going away just ask yourself what next you will have another thought coming next to that and then ask yourself what next after four five round of thoughts your mind actually goes blank because it doesn't really know what to do next after that it wasn't expecting you to ask those questions to the mind itself and then from there you can go into a um, a lot of other processes that we are talking about so there are ways of being able to work with those thoughts um see what works for you and obviously the simplest is what doctor mentioned that if you can find something that you are really interested in start with that and i'm sure that that will be a good starting point for you so uh doctor the next question that i have is were there any specific steps that you include in in the one minute meditation yeah in this you know there are a number of things that uh, people can practice and there is a a, a website uh, called just a minute meditation for those who have no experience in any meditation practice at all and these are just introductory um one minute focus guided uh, you know visualizations or audios which will help you know a person to um, get into a simple relaxed state and that's for non meditators in this uh, in the study what we did was uh, you know in brahma kumaris there are a number of different kinds of meditations that are practiced uh, and there are many different states of mind that are explored it's it's a quite a um, you know vast array of techniques really so uh, in that one of the foundation steps is called soul conscious meditation and basically what that means is the practitioner the meditator uh experiences themselves as a as a soul um which is like a star behind the forehead that's the experience that they try to have and uh it needs a fair bit of um training so for a a new person uh when they start they usually undergo a seven day course uh where they are taught what these concepts are and how to experience that and so it does need training uh you know so in our study what we did is we had three groups um one of them were non meditators and so what we told them is um just try to experience like i am a star behind the forehead you know it's a simple instruction try to imagine that try to experience that if possible for uh, the second group of uh, participants we had was uh, short term meditators those who had 6 months to 2 years of meditation experience they were proficient but they were new and so uh, they already know what is soul consciousness they have that experience and so they are able to get into the experience and the third group we had uh, was those who had over 10 years of practice over 10000 hours of meditation they are experts and this is an introductory step so all of them know this particular step of meditation and they also go into this meditation state and so the primary distinction between the three groups the first group has zero meditation experience they just practicing whatever is told you know i am i am a star behind the forehead i can do that for a minute anyone can do that and so that's what they did the second group knows what to do it can do it very well but they don't have a long term time of practice and the third group are experts those who have been doing it for a long time and they are masters in that field and so that's the key test that we were doing across these populations and so the instructions were very simply try to experience yourself as a star behind the forehead and that's it this is for the meditation state and we also had a rest state where the person was asked not to meditate you know and and so the question is not only that can you meditate but can you get into meditation or get out of meditation at will right so that's the protocol 
Oh. Yes, that's the website what you've linked. That's one of the websites that's uh, got a lot of introductory meditations for non-meditators. So those who have no background and no understanding of the philosophy and so on, they would just like to try something for a minute. These are, they have a lot of, um, you know, audio commentaries, which are one minute long. And some of them are, you know, relax your mind or, you know, keep calm and so on. Very basic topics without needing any background at all. So that's a useful site. All right. So I'm just sharing the link to that particular site in the uh, comments also for everyone who's watching who wants to kind of uh, explore what the one minute meditation is, especially if you're not uh, from a background where you've been meditating and you want to just be able to get started with that. So, Doc, just a second. I'm sharing it on the Facebook sure. and YouTube group. Oh, I thought you had already shared it. So I was talking about that. That was only with you because I was checking. Sure. Okay. Um, so we men you mentioned that you took people who were already experienced meditators majorly for this particular study, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, for the one minute meditation bit that you were doing. Now, can this meditation be done by those members who don't really follow the philosophy of uh, Brahma Kumaris? Uh, sure. I mean, meditations can definitely be done by anyone. And there are lots of people doing these meditations, um, especially the one minute meditation that you just shared on the link is something that anyone can practice without any background at all. Um, we don't know what the efficacy of that is specifically. What we have tested in our study is the soul conscious meditation part. And you know, looking at EEG signatures of what's happening in the brain, can you shift states objectively? Because you know, at the end of these meditations, everyone says they feel good. You know, they feel calmer, they feel peaceful. So that's good. But is it reliably different? Are there state changes happening? That's the question that we were testing. That's actually uh, so. I'm really happy listening to that. The reason I'm saying that is because for a long time. We have been maintaining this, that when we work with clients and you use processes like relaxation, meditation or hypnosis, the client not feeling good after the session, you really have to go out of your way to do a bad job, right? right. Because the nature of the work is that the client is in which is going to feel better at the end of the session. Sure. But that's not really a very reliable indicator for change. Right. The reliable indicator has to be based on sustainable change that the client is able to experience. Right? right. For us, we generally use behavioral change because that's what the client is also looking for. So the moment they are able to notice a sustainable behavioral change in their life, they know that whatever they've done in the process is working for them. And I'm really happy that you're also talking about not just how they're feeling at the end of the process, but actually a state change that's happening with them and it's sustaining over a period of time. And that's measurable at the brain with, uh, you know, objective parameters. So it's, we're not asking the person, were you able to meditate or not? Uh, that we're doing anyway, but we're also validating that by looking at EEG signal, EEG power, what is the um, kind of change that is there, and so on. And these are basically EEG, for those who are not familiar, uh, is, you know, we are putting electrodes on top of the, um, you know, scalp, and we are measuring electrical changes that's happening inside the brain while the person is meditating or being at rest. So then we are able to see, is this change happening at a practical level because of brain activity? That's something that we can test. OK, perfect. Um, so coming back to our topic in terms of uh, one minute meditation, are there any prerequisites for people who want to practice this? Um, yeah, for for the justaminute.org that you, say, you know, shared that basically anyone can do uh, for practicing soul conscious meditation, which is what we have tested. Uh, they should uh, participate in a seven day course typically. Uh, and that's available um, at centers pretty much anywhere around the world, really. And, you know, in, in every city in India, I think there are lots and lots of these meditation centers, Brahma Kumari's meditation centers, and they can visit that it's a uh, one hour per day for seven days. And uh, at the end of it, there is a fair bit of knowledge and understanding of what this process is. And then they can, uh, they would be able to practice that 
by themselves. And, um, you know, usually the centers also offer daily classes so they can do this lifelong. Um, and usually people end up doing that. Um, so that's something that's, uh, you know, to experience a soul conscious state that does need training. And that's a prerequisite, but it's a fairly simple thing. And I believe there are online courses also available now. Uh, I would, you know, defer to the Spark group to explain about that in a separate session. I think. Sure. Though I shared a link on both Facebook and YouTube right now, which has details about the One Minute Project from Brahma Kumaris. So anyone who's interested can please check those links out and see if um, you have any questions. Get back to us, and we'll be more than happy to answer those questions. Uh, Doc, before we go in, there's a question by some by Supriya on YouTube. And she's asked, was the EEG done during the process or after? It was during the process. So we have, uh, so let me explain a little bit about the protocol, if that's OK. Yeah, that's it. That's completely Yeah. So what we did was look at, um, you know, the, uh, we had 16 sessions of one minute each. And what we did is, uh, you know, the person in, in Brahma Kumaris, the meditation is usually done with eyes open. Uh, which is quite rare. Usually people do meditation with eyes closed. And so what we wanted to do is to see if people can shift between rest and meditation with eyes open and closed and before and after a challenging task. Um, and I'll explain what the uh, steps there is. So we start with rest, eyes open, and the instruction, they get an instruction which says that, you know, uh, don't have any salient thoughts, do not meditate, just relax and you know, uh, be yourself, think whatever, uh, with your eyes open. And so there is an instruction that comes in the front. There's a, you know, and there's a small bell which says, okay, now it's the time that starts and you rest for a minute. And then you close your eyes and rest for another minute. Uh, so you get instructions for each of these states. And then you get another bell and then you are asked to meditate for one minute. And all this time you're wearing this EEG, um, apparatus the cap and uh, this is a 128 channel um, eeg that we recorded um, and uh, so you do a eyes open meditation then a nice closed meditation and this whole thing repeats once more so you have eight sessions uh, eight of these states in one um, session okay so this before uh, anything as soon as you come you are instructed about all this you do these eight steps and then there is a task. And in this task, basically, it's a game. And there are three levels of this game and with increasing difficulty. So what happens is, uh, you know, towards the end, you perform very well initially. And towards the end, you make a lot of mistakes. And uh, it's a it's very simple task, but it happens very fast. You have to respond in milliseconds. So uh, as you go forward, you make mistakes. And we give feedback that you know this is your score. And so this simulates the situation that in real world, sometimes we get into stressful situations. We make mistakes. And you know we don't have time. We have to make quick judgments. And that's what we're simulating. And it's very engaging. So at the end of this, this is about one and a half hours. So after the one and a half hours of task, then we ask them again, can you get back into meditation? So we do the same eight steps, you know, eyes open rest, eyes closed rest, eyes open meditation, eyes closed meditation done twice. And so then what we are checking is between rest, eyes open and eyes closed. If we check before a task, after the task, taking everything together, is there a state shift? If you combine all um, eyes closed, similarly, can you see a state shift? If you combine before and after a task, you stay, see a state shift. That's what we're trying to see. And what we're trying to see is, is the protocol sufficient that even a non-meditator can achieve it? Secondly, is a new meditator, is there an EEG signature to it? What kind of state changes, what's happening, and can they do it in a minute? And finally, the long-term meditators, what is happening in their state change? Right. So that's how this protocol was done. And EEG was acquired continuously throughout this. And this was all carried uh, out in Dr. Uh, lab. Uh, so were you saying something, Doc? I've, I've yes, lost that was, uh, the whole study was carried out at NIMHANS in Dr. Bindukuti's lab, uh, which is uh, the Department of Neurophysiology. And there's a Center for Consciousness 
uh, studies there and the study was carried out there okay uh, there's another question about uh, are we checking the state during the challenging task also um, we that's a separate study here the the question is about you know state change during meditation we're not looking at uh, during the task that's a separate study and that we're not talking about that particular thing in this um, uh, you know in this paper what we are discussing all right perfect um so now that we have discussed the methodology and the process for the entire research any other tools that you would like to talk about that were also used in the research sure actually there were a number of things um, that were done um, there were a number of psychological um, you know questionnaires to do with their well being trying to understand what's happening um, and these are uh, the, the the groups that we studied uh, the meditators are all proficient meditators right so even though someone is new uh, they are pretty good at what they are doing and they have been recruited from the with the support of spark so the subzonal coordinators in of brahmakumaris in bangalore they uh, so they were kind enough to send the meditators uh, after you know checking the criteria and i verified that they meet all the criteria in terms of you know none of them had any lifetime experience of any other form of meditation so those there were a number of inclusion and exclusion criteria and uh, the additional thing that we did was uh, look at psychological you know uh, their well being questionnaires their subjective well being psychological well being the quality of life and there is a whole number of measures so we had another paper that was related specifically to their proficiency and duration of practice and well being and uh, i believe we will talk about that at a separate session later okay all right perfect um what were the observations and the effect outcome on the psychological level physical level and the psychosocial level um yeah so in the um primarily the non meditators did not have a change uh, they there were no electrophysiological changes in any of the um you know before the session after the session taking everything together there were no changes at all so they felt all of them said that they felt good they were able to do some meditation that's what they felt uh, when we asked them for their reports but um essentially there was no brain state shift between rest and meditation now uh, this is different than saying that there were no changes at all there were changes if you look you know sequentially so what is happening is after rest they meditate they have some sort of a, a change because even if you concentrate there are changes in uh, the brain patterns right so you have in this particular case they were increased theta and so on so you you see some power changes even if you are just concentrating the problem is they are not able to get back to rest after that and then get back into meditation after that you know that switch is not possible for them so when we are looking at state changes between rest and meditation that is not possible for non meditators in our study for the specific protocol that we designed um, so there are changes uh, as as time progresses but not in terms of state shifts the uh, short term meditators they when we combined all the eyes closed uh meditation before and after the task there were changes there was increased alpha uh alpha is uh, you know alpha power is usually seen when you close your eyes you have an increased alpha power that's sort of a normal thing but what we are talking about is a shift between rest and meditation we're not talking about just eyes closed and you have increased alpha we're shifting between rest and meditation and so the short term meditators were able to achieve state shifts but they were not able to do it in one minute they were able to do it if you combine all these rest and meditation segments before and after the task so that's a longer duration overall um, so there also the challenge is it's not that they were not having increased uh, power it's just the ability to shift which is a challenge um, but there was uh, some indicator that they were able to achieve and they are proficient meditators anyway um uh, and the long term meditators they were able to do it before the task after the task combining it in eyes open in eyes closed so they were robustly able to shift and their their state changes were in the uh, theta range and so uh, the interesting thing what that demonstrates is you know you can um 
pay attention and with effort you can make state changes even in six months to a year of practice uh, you can be effective in that that's that's all it takes to really master this but it doesn't happen in a minute it takes longer than that to truly be effortless and achieve mastery which is on demand it will kind of change it takes long time of practice and the long-term group had 10 years plus of practice we don't know if it can be done in five years but certainly those who had 10 years plus experience were able to do this and in any condition even after making mistakes and you know all of them made mistakes the task was designed that you know all participants had uh, mistakes in the task so so in, in spite of that you can get back to um, a meditative state at will and so that's that's good news um, in the sense that um, it is possible um, the the, the side note to that is it takes time. You know, if you expect that you just sit and you had a major problem and you just sit and say, woof, let me meditate and get peaceful, it might not happen that. So uh, one of the things in the Brahma Kumaris is that you need to practice um, for a long time. That's a phrase that they use. And uh, to be a master. And I think that's very true. That's what this study sort of shows. Okay, perfect, brilliant. Uh, there is a question by uh, Supriya about. Can I add? Yeah, please. Um, the this is slightly different than saying that can you benefit? You also mentioned about psychosocial and you know psychological benefits. So you can have well-being benefits pretty quickly. You do not need ten years of practice for that. Even the um, short-term meditators had you know, profoundly, um, you know, improved well-being states. And uh, as compared to controls, uh, you know, they were, they, they were pretty robust. Um, and so you can benefit from meditation pretty quickly. The ability to have mastery on a state of, uh, on your state is something different. So to make it effortless, take time. But with attention, you can have uh, well-being pretty quickly. If you are trying to change your life, lifestyle changes, um, you know, you can achieve that pretty quickly. So that's the uh, other good news that I would like to offer with this paper. Hi, perfect, brilliant. And Supriya has also asked a question about, is there a published paper that she can refer to? Sure. Um, I don't know if I have the ability to share, um, but I think I've shared, it with um, I've shared that with iCharts. So. I think, I don't know. So Supriya, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the link in some time once I'm able to get hold of the link. I think it's there with us and I'll share it before the end of this episode. Okay. I've just shared the article with you, uh, Nitinji. Maybe you could share it with others. Thank you. So Supriya, here is the link that you can check out. Okay. Super. Um, how would you, what would you say to people who would say that we would like to do one minute meditation now? Sure. Um, one simple thing I would actually recommend uh, rather than me um, trying to teach meditation right now is point you to that link. Uh, that we already have and maybe uh, you know uh, we also have a youtube link i believe that i had, uh, we had discussed and you could share that it's a very simple thing on relaxation so what i would like you to uh, for you know when uh, if you could play that video what i would like participants to do is forget everything else and follow the very very simple instruction and try to be in that state without worrying about you know am i a good meditator or not or can i do it or not just if they say relax and you know um, calm down or whatever they instruct just follow that so this is not soul conscious meditation this is just relaxation right so uh, what i would welcome people to try and and I would, uh, I, I believe that even doing this very short thing would bring a peaceful state. Um, and if they're interested in more uh, details, I would encourage them to actually visit a meditation center where they can have their personal doubts clarified. And usually this is a one-on-one -on -one session and it's for free. So, you know, people would be, uh, the meditation teachers would be more than happy to uh, they, they do this as a service. So they'd be more than happy to 
take in your questions and guide you personally for any understanding. All right, perfect, brilliant. So I'm going to share the link to that in the comments box. Um, any of you who would like to experience in meditation right now, please go ahead, play it, listen to it, and get back to us probably before the end of today when we are ending the session or maybe in the next session to let us know what was your experience like. Now, while we are reaching the end of today's episode, Doc, anything else that you would like to add? Any other inputs that you would like to add for everyone who is listening to us right now? Yeah. Um, you know, people come to meditation for many, many different reasons. You know, some people come for stress, some are, you know, psychologically challenged, some have you know, physical pain and difficulties. Some would like to know God. People come for very, very different reasons. And uh, it's important to note that, you know, uh, there are many different meditation traditions and, you know, not everything fits everyone equally. Uh, so I would encourage people to try. And, and especially if there's a, a mental challenge or, you know, an illness that's there, I would encourage them to first consult with their physician before trying a different kind of uh, a specific kind of meditation and and to mention that this is what i'm trying to practice now these one minute meditations uh, that uh, is there in the just a minute.org they are very very simple they are just trying to relax and so on so it should not cause a problem to anyone but uh, if they're trying to do anything more ambitious, trying to go into more detail, usually most meditation forms are pretty helpful. Uh, but you know, there are occasions where some meditations could have some adverse reactions and um, certain mental illnesses. So it's important to consult your physician uh, before trying to do anything advanced. Um, but uh, that's just a cautionary note. Uh, in general, meditation is very helpful. It's um, you know it's been demonstrated again and again in thousands of papers uh, that it's good for well-being. And um, you know, in our study, I've studied you know the Brahma Kumari's method in different ways. Uh, there's quite robust evidence of the well-being benefits in Raj Yoga uh, as taught by the Brahma Kumaris, and also in other meditation forms. Um, so, really, the most important thing for you to do is to meditate rather than think about meditating and so on so um, try something learn what's uh, what are available these are usually free resources uh, so you don't really have to invest a lot of money or time uh, experiment with it that's something valuable that's one the other thing that I would recommend is also um, take care of your physical health, you know, uh, in terms of exercise, in terms of diet, in terms of adequate sleep, uh, because these are all also important things for well-being. And often they're not, um, you know, considered uh, strongly enough, you know, people just pull on and, and manage their stresses. So I would recommend... Uh, uh, you know, everyone to explore meditation for sure, but also take care of their physical and uh, other aspects of well-being. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So, uh, a couple of things that I want to add for all of you who are watching us right now. Uh, as I said, we specialize in working with coaches and therapists and we take personal therapy. So, one of the things that we have noticed is, while it's good for all of you to do meditations and try different meditations, at the same time, if you are already in a state where you're feeling very vulnerable, very overwhelmed, or while doing a process, you start feeling uncomfortable, please consult your mental health practitioner. While all meditative practices probably are really good and they can really benefit you, they're not really replacements for consulting a specialist in terms of a practitioner if you're struggling with certain areas of your life. right? And that's also one of the reasons why we are doing these series and these episodes, because while we want to promote the idea of different things that you as individuals can do to be able to maintain your mental health and to be able to live a happier, healthier and a more fulfilling life, uh, please do remember that there are different roles for different people. And there are places where visiting and consulting a mental practitioner may, may be almost necessary for you. So don't think of one as a replacement for another. Uh, you can continue with one and you want to probably also do the second if you are in a state where you're feeling really uncomfortable or if you feel that probably visiting a mental practitioner would also help you and support you in your journey of achieving whatever outcomes that you want to achieve. 
uh, I can say this because I also, when I'm taking sessions, I actually get a lot of clients who have been practicing certain meditations, but sadly, the meditation that they are practicing is not working for them and is doing more harm to them than good. And the reason for that is not that the meditation is wrong. It's just that, that meditation doesn't probably suit their mental state that they have right now. So keep that in mind. It's extremely important for you to be able to seek the right kind of help that you need and that can really help you in your journey towards a happier, healthier, and fulfilling life, as I mentioned earlier. Also, today, a lot of what we've discussed about is uh, the philosophy or the meditations related to uh, Brahma Kumari. So obviously, you need to understand a bit about the philosophy to be able to really make use of uh, the meditations and the researches that we're talking about. I'm going to share a link with all of you so that you can go and research and read a bit on Raj Yoga meditation and Brahma Kumari so that you also have the context in terms of what we are talking about and how you can benefit from it fully. Lastly. So, Doc, one of the things that we are doing is we are encouraging more and more people to make an announcement that if I ever need help and I need to visit a mental health practitioner, then I pledge that while I'm doing what I can do to take care of my mental health, I will be open to the idea of visiting a mental health practitioner. And I would also encourage other people to consult a mental health practitioner, not just because they may have a disorder or an illness, but it's like when you visit a physician, right? You're not necessarily visiting a physician because you have a problem. It can normally be a checkup that you're going through. And you could do the same thing with visiting a mental health practitioner. So we have this challenge called as visit a mental health practitioner challenge, where we are encouraging more and more people to come out, make an announcement, seeing that they are open and willing to visit a mental health practitioner as a part of their normal life so that they can uh, give their mental health as much importance as they give their physical health. I would really like it if you could make that announcement and say that, I would be more than happy to visit a mental practitioner as and when I feel that. Uh, it's sure. Okay. And I think uh, one of the, you know, the reason you have highlighted that, and I think it's important, is that there is an associated stigma with uh, visiting a mental health practitioner as though we become lesser in some way. And uh, it's important to understand that the brain is also very much part of the body. And, uh, you know, there's a lot that can happen if we are under stress. There are hormones that are released which impact the body. And the, the one of the current works that I'm doing with asthma is showing that the effect that the you know stress has on neuroinflammation and neuroinflammation that has on you know our psychological profile. So these are very very powerful uh, uh, you know situations and interactions between the brain and the body and the mind. Uh, and so. Uh, you know, we should consider this with equal respect and, you know, with uh, with the understanding that if we have a challenge, then we should uh, definitely consult with professionals. And I'm certainly happy to do that, uh, you know, to, to benefit from those who have expertise in the area and who can help in a particular situation. I mean, if you have a heart problem, you don't say that, you know, I, I, I just hope that it will go away. You know, you, you visit a cardiologist, right? And so it's the same with mental health. And I would encourage everyone to uh, to not look at a mental health problem as any different as, as a physical health problem. It's probably more important than physical health problems. In fact, uh, you know, you if you look at the predominance of uh you know mental health problems in the world uh it's just increasing so much because of the kind of stresses and, and last year was certainly a very you know devastating year for lots and lots of people um there's a question that has come up which is uh saying that not all people are capable of meditating one of the research papers mentions that but those who meditate they benefit a lot i think the second statement is definitely true uh but it's not true for everyone uh, you know, there are some people who have who meditate and have adverse effects, and it's probably because they're not practicing the meditation that's most suited for them. Uh, the the first statement is, uh, and I I do not really agree with that statement because I would encourage people to think about this uh, a little bit. Meditation is an umbrella term. There are many many forms of meditation and. Chances are that the kind of meditation that is suitable for you is available in some form or some school. Um, you know, some of them are contemplative, some are attention driven, some of them are 
non attention driven it's mindfulness some involve movement some involve sitting some involve breath some don't so there's a really wide range of meditative techniques so um i would encourage anyone who's interested in meditating and feel that they can't to explore further not to say well i tried one kind of meditation and it doesn't work and so i'm not a meditator uh, i would uh, encourage you to uh, explore different forms of meditation and find until you find something that suits and then stick with it in detail until you get to some mastery because you know the first time you try meditation it might not work so you do need to engage with it for some time to practice it sincerely and if after 6 months you do not find any benefits uh, you know then you should explore something else that's Perfect. what i would suggest so vedangi uh, so vedangi is actually one of our students so she'll understand what i'm saying right now so vedangi it's actually the same as saying where people say that not everyone can be hypnotized the truth is it just depends on how you are defining the process one what your understanding is to and second is the right process being applied it's not just about uh using a technique and the technique doesn't work so yes obviously there is no one technique that will work for everyone in this world i don't really think there is one technique that exists like that we all of us otherwise will be doing that the truth is there are different types of techniques each techniques work with different kinds of people so you need to be able to figure out what the right technique for you is the same applies to hypnosis the same applies to meditation in many many ways and uh, uh, so just be careful about that also i am emphasizing this again what doc said is very right that to say that every meditation is good for everyone is probably a bit of a misnomer you have to understand that there are different types of meditations each meditation has a different impact on the way your mind functions the way your system responds to it and so on so if you are experiencing a discomfort with a particular process don't just assume that discomfort is a part of the process and that i will get over it consult someone who knows the practice that you are doing and they will probably be able to guide you and support you a lot more effectively yeah right? but i would also say that don't stop at the first moment of difficulty because you know self mastery is not a trivial effort uh, there is there is an initial hiccup and unfortunately most of us are not trained from childhood to do this uh, so from my experience from within uh, studying in the brahma kumaris you know there's a wide variety of people you know from illiterate to extremely educated to you know all backgrounds and so for a vast majority of people it works you know if it's so what it means is you know if you try it sincerely chances are that whatever you're trying uh, would work out for you but uh, if it doesn't you know check with those who are you know experts in that tradition and if they can't help you also then move on uh, you know you don't have to uh, feel bad that you're not able to meditate you can find something that works for you perfect brilliant um uh, i would like to make the same announcement that i asked dr mac they that uh, as in when i feel actually i already have a mental health practitioner i consult with a mental health practitioner probably almost on a weekly basis because uh, there are a lot of things both in terms of uh, goals that we are working with and i have noticed that my mental health practitioner has been very very useful in terms of me being able to achieve my outcomes and goals so it's not just about helping me overcome certain challenges that i may have but it's also about being able to grow and evolve and achieve the uh, targets that i want to achieve in my life and second when we talk about meditation and when we talk about stress and when we talk about hypnosis please remember there are enough people who have received enough benefits in areas that you can't even imagine right and there was a time when people thought that aches and pains to physical hote you'll be surprised how many people now receive benefit because they have been focusing on working with their mental health and through their mental health actually psychosomatic health issues and aches and pains are also being addressed for a lot of people so you may be surprised where focusing on your mental health will really really help you focus do those meditations work with mental health practitioners work with whatever groups that you are working with and please focus on your mental health in some format or the other right don't ignore it it's extremely important part of your life uh, and that's all that i can probably request all of you to do so i hope all of you benefited from what we discussed today uh, it's been an amazing episode for me so i would really like to uh, thank dr for being there with us for the episode today we are looking forward to seeing you for some of the further research and further episodes going forward 
anything else that thank you would you. like to say in the end thank you i i i think uh, one thing that's important for everyone to keep in mind um is to take care of themselves uh this is not a selfish endeavor but taking care of your own well being is useful for not only for yourself but also for those who are in your contact your family your friends your colleagues um uh, mental health is everyone's um you know it's everyone's agenda it's it's not someone's personal thing so even though uh, you know you want to make a big difference do great work all that is great i think you should go that and and a lot of people are high achievers and you know go through a lot of stress in trying to achieve all that um but if you don't take care of yourself you know whatever achievements you might achieve in the world uh you know that's that's a costly victory so i would really encourage um while doing all the great things that you're doing take care of yourself take care of your family and friends and colleagues if you are peaceful if you are happy if you are loving and respectful to people then the world is a much better place by just being who you are so um that's what i would like everyone to consider um and take care thank you thank you take care everyone we will see you next week again 7:30 with another meditation another research and i really hope that you are going to benefit from this and not just intellectually but you'll also start applying it in your life so thank you take care bye bye bye